This is Jackie, and I'm here with Johnny of Nothing More, day one of Riot Fest. I think the last time I spoke to you was Bonnaroo 2015, maybe? Was it? Did you play 2015? I can't remember which year. They all blend into each other. I, that sounds right. That sounds right. <laughs> I think it was 2015, because 2016, we were off for most of it working on the record. So. Yeah, and this year's been a pretty big year for you so far. I uh, recently saw you play at the APMAs. So you're a little, little busy this year. How come, you know, how are things so far since, since uh, I saw you last time in Bonnaroo? Um, it's, you know, it's always busy in our world. But we did get a little bit of space um, when we worked on this record. We took about a year, a little over a year to work on it and did just a tiny bit of travel in between. But um, got some time at home to, like, feel like a normal human being again, not just a nomad pirate <laughs> shoved in a bus with 12 other people all the time. So it's kind of like you live in a hallway all the time rather than a actual home so you know what i think that's a really good analogy a pirate travel yeah that what that works that lives in a hallway and speaking of the new album uh the stories we tell ourselves comes out today yeah no pressure not at all i mean the sun's shining it's like 80 degrees in chicago i mean you can't really be that upset it's a pretty great it's a pretty great day uh, you guys released five singles before the album dropped why did you make that decision um well the record we've been working on it for a while um we're a band that takes you know a good amount of time on our records because we really want a lot of meat in it we want it to last um so i felt like i felt like a lot of people that supported us in the beginning with pledge music have been waiting for a long time and even though the record wasn't going to release yet for business reasons and you know strategic timing reasons uh, there's a lot of stuff the label and marketing people consider so when they said it was going to be in september you know, we, we were like, okay, well, let's at least get some music out there. So we thought the trickle thing would be nice and give people something to chew on. Yeah, little, little tease, little tease, little yeah. tease. Um, describe how your, sing, your lead single, uh, Go to War, sort of represents the overall sound. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it really represents the overall sound. I, I really couldn't say that about any song, only because um, this record, more than any other record we've done, explores a few different territories um, like if you listen to go to war it's very different than a song like the great divorce um, very different from a song like just say when they all kind of go in a different uh, emotional and sonic territory but I would say that go to war is reflective of um, I guess a, a sound if you will or a quality that we focused on this time around which was more transparency in the vocal and more heartfelt delivery and more bass like a lot of rock bands kind of give the bass player the uh the boot they kind of just blend them into the guitars but our bass player we really make sure to turn them up in the mix and make him featured and go to war has made it to tv and film how does that benefit you as a band um i mean it makes our egos feel really good um <laughs> it's a fun talking point um i get to tell my friends and feel really cool um, and I'm a lover of film and would love to get more than that. Uh, I'd love to direct movies actually one day. It's a second dream of mine outside of music. So it makes me feel amazing that it's our music's getting intertwined with stuff like that. But when uh, the Planet of the Apes thing happened, I think the, the best thing that it did was just um, get people looking up the band and go, you know, who is this? And at first we were like, well, we kind of wish it was in the movie, it was in the trailer. But then somebody was like, yeah, but more people see the trailer. And we we're like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. So it was, it was uh, very good for us. And I can see your performance being pretty, your performances are pretty theatrical. So I think it's a good fit. Yeah. Um, what are some things or people or experiences that influence the songwriting on this album? Um, man, uh, a lot of experiences for us. Um, I had uh, one of the biggest, most, most central ones on this record for me was going through a pretty big life transition. Um, I was with uh, an ex for about eight years, and I met this, uh, uh, met Jesse, what was her name, uh, the day my mom died. So there was a lot of psychological and emotional strings attached and a lot of invested. And so I went uh, through that, and it ended, that relationship ended right when we started working on the record, pretty much. So needless to say, there's plenty to, plenty to write about, plenty to vent, but it was a pretty difficult record to finish just because it, it felt like a felt like a punch in the gut a little bit but it was it, it's really cool because this record is like a death and a rebirth and then hope at the end of it. it it really goes in that order and that's exactly how I feel I'm in such a better place and so is she and we're both happy for each other and 
couldn't be better, you know. So that's what this record really took a picture of. Nice, I like that. Uh, so I mentioned your APMA's performance. I think you stunned the crowd out there. Is the score the scorpions coming? Correct. The scorpions <laughs> going to make an appearance. Yes, and it might sting you. You got to watch out. It's uh, it's our little pet name for this this weird device that our bass player built with his own hands. Um, he builds a lot of stuff for us on stage, and this is one of them. So it's going to make an appearance today, and I'm going to ride uh, Drumtron, which is another pet name we have for my drums up front. It, like, launches into the air, and I'm going to get to play around with this, this mechanical uh, metal toy. <laughs> You definitely have, you, I was going to say, you have some toys to play with on stage. Yeah. It definitely makes for a, an interesting and more theatrical performance. I think it's really fun. So what's up next for you guys uh, after Riot Fest? You definitely have a lot of, I'm sure, album things to do, to work on. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got the rest of the U.S. tour. So we're doing uh, Canada and the U.S. and a few, uh, maybe about six more weeks of that. And then we're going to come home for a little bit and go to Europe. So, excuse me. There it is. <laughs> um, so once we do the European tour, come home for Christmas, and then go out on Shiprocked, which is like a boat that uh, all these bands play on, and fans get to kind of have a, a vacation experience with their favorite bands, which is pretty cool. You just want to be a pirate again. Uh, yeah, we're, we're a pirate in a different... In a real pirate. A real pirate this time. Yeah, and then another U.S. tour after that, and then we'll probably go to Japan and Australia and Europe again, and... Her heads will be spinning by the end of this record, but oh my gosh. it's exciting. Well, be sure to check out the stories we tell ourselves out today from Nothing More. This is Jackie, thanks to In the Key of Change and Chorus FM.